Apple's getting ready to release a ton of new iPads, and in this video, I wanna talk about all the leaks and rumors for the redesigned iPad Pro, upcoming iPad Air, iPad Mini 7, as well as iPad 11. Because it turns out when you don't update a single iPad in 2023, there, there's a lot just around the corner, and we're hearing an event in March of 2024 is when the majority of these are coming. So let's start off with the new iPad Pro because the last time we saw anything even remotely interesting for this product, it was in 2018 with the last redesign. And to be honest, this design has held up incredibly well to the point where it's almost essentially impossible to distinguish a 2018 iPad Pro from a new 2020 unless you turn it around and look at the camera. Well, in 2024, that's all about to change because this new iPad Pro is going to be getting an updated design. I have a feeling pretty similar to the style of the iPhone 15s. Rather than using the more industrial flat edges that the iPad has used for a while, I think they're gonna go the iPhone 15 route and go with something smoother and more comfortable in your hand. And these smoother edges, especially on something bigger like the iPad Pro, I think they would feel absolutely incredible. But that's just the start of the redesign because the big focus of these new iPad Pros is that Apple will be finally adding an OLED display onto these, which without a question will be the biggest iPad display leap since the original model came out in 2010. This is the same screen tech that Apple has been using on the iPhone since 2017, and it means the color accuracy, the vibrancy, the number of colors it can display, and most importantly, the black levels are just going to be night and day different. Even up against the more premium mini LED that Apple's been using on the larger iPad Pros for a couple of years, it's going to be a big update because OLED doesn't suffer from blooming issues, which have gotten better on the iPad Pros, but are definitely not great. And when you can the quality and solidness of an OLED display with 120 hertz ProMotion, like there is not even going to be another tablet on the market that comes close to the fidelity of the iPad Pro. It I'm calling it now, it's gonna be ridiculous. And as for screen sizes on the 2024 iPad Pros, those are also changing just a bit. While Apple's keeping the same size for the 11 inch model, the 12.9 inch version is increasing just a hair to 13 inches exactly, which probably won't even be noticeable. It makes me question why Apple is doing this in the first place. But like at this point, the iPad is basically a MacBook and actually more on that in just a bit. The new iPad Pro, like the current ones, will also be great for editing and using PDFs. And that's actually why I partnered up with UPDF, who sponsored today's video. And this app is one I just wish somebody would have told me about in college because it, let me just show you what it does. It allows you to edit pretty much any element on your page, like you're in Word, while preserving the text format and the existing structure of the page. Using UPDF, you can easily annotate things on the page. You can edit the content that you're looking at. You can convert it to different formats that you'd like to send it in. It's super easy to add protection to documents, to fill out forms or add additions, and even digitally sign things, which is something I do all the time. And again, I wish I would have known about this sooner. And with UPDF Cloud, you get 20 gigabytes of cloud storage so you don't have to eat into your iCloud allocation. On top of everything else though, UPDF now integrates with AI as well. This allows you to process PDF, summarize things, explain and translate content, or even talk to the chatbot within UPDF itself. But best of all, UPDF is incredibly cost effective. It's like 12% the cost of Acrobat and you can buy one license for all of your devices. And right now using my link down below in the description, you can get the biggest discount on UPDF Pro plus AI and get 20 gigabytes of cloud storage as well. So check them out, link down below. Thanks to UPDF for sponsoring now. Let's get back to the video. Okay, before the break, I mentioned how Apple's been trying to turn the iPad Pro into a computer thanks to accessories like the Magic Keyboard. And Apple is taking this idea even further on these new iPad Pros. As Mark Gurman reports that it's going to be a completely redesigned version of the Magic Keyboard with the top case part of the actual keyboard that you will interact with, including the trackpad area, it's going to be aluminum now. So it is going to even feel much more like a MacBook than prior. And the trackpad itself, well, that is also going to be getting more MacBook-like as Apple is increasing the trackpad size on this updated Magic Keyboard 2 as well. And listen, I don't wanna to get too excited, but maybe we'll even get an escape button on the next Magic Keyboard because um, there's not one. And I, I'd really like I'd really like an escape key. That would be very, very nice. The Magic Keyboard though, that's just the first of two major accessory upgrades because we are finally getting the Apple Pencil 3 with these new iPad Pros. We've actually seen leaks for this product for a while that not only suggested it would ditch the current matte design, which I really like and go back to glossy like on the Apple Pencil 1, it's also going to get redesigned magnetic tips. These tips would be interchangeable, allow you to get like a paintbrush stroke or a pencil stroke or a pen 
10 feel marker. You could change it out for whatever you want. I bet even third party accessory makers could make something to be compatible with this too. It is a very cool idea. I just hope Apple actually straightens out the current Apple Pencil line because the fact that there are three different Apple Pencils to choose and two of which are from before 2018 and the new one has less features than both of those combined, it's just, it's confusing, man. And I don't even wanna explain it in this video. I made another video about these pencils, but yeah, I just, I hope this new one doesn't convolute the line even more. I hope it simplifies it. The new iPad Pros will also, of course, be faster than they are now. Apple's going to throw an M3 chip inside of here, but if you are somebody who even figured out how to max out the M2 or M1 chip in an iPad, that's actually really impressive. And you probably deserve the M3. I just know my iPad has felt about the same speed since, <laughs> Well, for a while, I couldn't tell you the last time my iPad felt slow. Last thing on these new iPad Pros, we're hearing the cameras are going to get better. I have a feeling Apple's going to add spatial video shooting for these because they actually have the cameras perfectly lined up now to work just as they are on the iPhone 15 Pro series. Not that anyone should shoot video with their iPad, although Apple seems pretty obsessed with this idea because in pretty much every release of the iPad, they show someone on a professional film set shooting with this, and I just don't think that's a real thing. Either way, this new iPad Pro in 2024, it's gonna be one to look out for, and it's just finally going to be a different or new product, which it has not felt like since 2018. Next up, let's say you don't wanna spend as much money on the iPad Pro, but you've always wanted that 12.9 inch larger size. Well, that is where the all new iPad Air for 2024 comes in, as Apple is planning to do a pretty large refresh here as well. While it is said to fundamentally look very similar to how it does currently, they are adding a new 12.9 nine inch lower end model to the iPad Air. So for the first time, the iPad Air will come in a 10.9 inch size as well as a larger 12.9 inch version. Now there are two big caveats here. Number one is 60 Hertz. Number two is LCD. You will not be getting the highest quality OLED panel with the beautiful ProMotion refresh rate because you know, these are hundreds of dollars cheaper, but it is fascinating that you will finally be able to get that massive size for under $1,000. I think in the tablet world, that could actually work really well and be pretty appealing to a ton of people. Now on the inside of the iPad Air, Apple will also be updating the chip on here. It'll go from an M1 to a M2 chip, which should be a little bit faster than before. But again, like on the iPad Pros, I just don't think many people, unless you're maxing out your iPad, will really notice a chip difference at this point. And finally, expect some minor camera upgrades on here as well, but absolutely nothing major and not near as much attention as Apple would put on the iPad Pro cameras. <clears throat> okay, uh, now we're at the point of the video where we get to talk about the iPad mini. This is not said to launch in March, but it is definitely coming later in 2024. And while I historically have been hard on this product because I just don't really get its function, I I will say in recent months, it has started to warm up to me, especially knowing that in this new iPad mini seven version, Apple's fixing some big problems. First, Apple is making the display a lot better on here. The new iPad mini will no longer suffer from jelly scroll where the left or right side of the screen updates before the other and creates this jelly like effect that looks super cheap. It's something that a lot of people don't notice, but if you're somebody like me that does notice it, you can't unsee it. And this quality screen for $500 is just unexpected acceptable for me. The new iPad mini is going to rotate the LCD controller, so that should no longer be an issue. And the second thing Apple is changing, that I, I mean, not as big of an issue, but still good to hear is that the, the colors are going to get better. I just feel like the current selection is pretty bland and played out at this point, and I'd like to see some more variety like on the iPad Air. And at this point in the video, you probably guessed the last two changes for the iPad mini. We're gonna have some upgraded cameras on here, although I would expect pretty minor changes in that department. And there's gonna be a faster A16 chip. I would not expect an M series chip in the iPad mini. Just that, just saying that out loud, an M1 in the iPad mini makes my brain actually want to explode. But at this point, you know, all bets are off. Anything could happen. Okay. And finally, one more iPad that Apple has to update, the iPad 11, the base model, which starts at $449. I'm expecting a few things with this. The main and only change will likely be an updated A15 or A16 chip inside, considering that the big redesign happened in 2022 with new colors, landscape camera. The new one in 2024 is going to be pretty muted, but we are hearing that the cheaper $329 iPad 9, that base, base model that Apple's been selling for years, 
years at this point, that is finally going away. So I'm betting that Apple is going to drop the price of this one to maybe 379, 399, but I, I definitely believe it will be cheaper than 449. There's no way they don't have a more affordable iPad in their lineup, especially when that cheap one sells incredibly well still. Regardless, a huge year for iPad updates, albeit, I don't know if there's anything I heard in this video that convinces me the iPad it can be saved at this point. I'm working on a whole video about the future of the iPad or maybe not the future at all based on Apple's current trajectory. So stay tuned for that video in maybe a week or two. But I'm still fascinated by the iPad Pro redesign. I, I'm very excited to see that. And it's something that I use all the time to watch videos. And you know, I, I do actually touch PDFs on here a ton. You guys should check out UPDF the sponsor again down below. I'm just, this is a fascinating product to me and they're making it more like the MacBook, but the MacBook's already great. So where, where does that leave that? You guys let me know down below in the comment section. I've been Sam, thanks so much for watching this one. And thanks to my friend, Luke Miani for letting me film in a set because my, I don't currently have any of my furniture or anything because I moved. That's a whole thing we'll get into later. Okay, I've been Sam, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one, peace.